How do alkenes and haloalkanes compare with one another and how do they react to convert one into the other? Start by looking at these two pictures. Here we have propene and 2-chloropropane. How do these two differ? Two things are very obvious. The alkene has a double bond, whereas that's absent in the haloalkane. Secondly, the haloalkane, of course, has a halogen atom inside it. So if you're going to convert from an alkene to a haloalkane, one, you have to get rid of that double bond, and two, you have to add that halogen. But that's not all, because notice also that the haloalkane has more hydrogen atoms. How many more? Only one. So if you're going going to have to convert from an alkene to a haloalkane, you're going to have to add in that hydrogen and the reverse direction, you're going to have to remove it. So if we are changing from an alkene to a haloalkane, what will have to be added? What must the alkene react with so that it is converted into a haloalkane? Take a look at the general formula to help you. We can see here alkene CxH2x. The haloalkane has the same except it has another H and then also an X. In case you haven't seen it yet, perhaps these pictures will help you. Here we have a picture of propene and of 2-chloropropane. So we see that this alkene is going to need to have the double bond broken, replaced with a single bond. We need an H in there and we need a Cl added. So what is it that we need to react the alkene with? I hope you can see it must be Hx or else X2. That will also work if we want to end up with this kind of a haloalkane. We see the hydrogen and the chlorine separating from one another, the double bond breaking, the new bonds form and there we have the haloalkane. What about if we rather have X2, for example, Cl2 reacting? Again, the bond between the two halogen atoms in the diatomic molecule breaks, the double bond breaks, the new bonds form. We have a haloalkane with a formula CxH2xX2. So let's take an example. Here we have ethene reacting with Cl2. What will the product be? 1,2-dichloroethane. This is an addition reaction. The chlorine is being incorporated into the alkene. The alkene's double bond is being traded for two single bonds, each with a halogen atom. What about this example? We have propene reacting with hydrogen bromide. What is the product going to be? 2-bromopropane. That's going to be the major product. The major product has the halogen in a more central position, not on the edge of the molecule. So in breaking that double bond and letting the bromine in, the bromine rather attaches to the central carbon than to the edge carbon. And so that's why the main product is 2-bromopropane. Again, this is an addition reaction. The hydrogen halide has simply been incorporated into the molecule, breaking the alkenes bonds to form a haloalkane. So what do we call that kind of addition reaction? We call it hydrohalogenation in the case of HX or halogenation in the case of X2. Both of them are addition reactions. And this happens spontaneously. We can see that, for example, if we take ethene, which is an example of an alkene, and we add it to some bromine water. The bromine water is bromine, Br2, dissolved in water. We can see the presence of the bromine by the brown color. But when we add the ethene and shake, the brown color disappears as that bromine is added into the alkene molecule, splitting the double bonds inside the ethene, replacing them with single bonds with bromine, and incorporating the bromine into the molecule to form the haloalkane bromoethane and in so doing, removing the brown color. And the reason why this happens so easily is because the alkene is unsaturated. And so it has these double bonds which can easily break to incorporate the halogen. Now, what about the reverse of that? Obviously, that's not going to just happen spontaneously because the reverse of a spontaneous reaction is going to need some kind of encouragement to make it happen. We're going to have to heat it. Also, we're going to have to use a compound to help us. And the compound that we're going to need to help us for this reaction to occur is concentrated 
sodium hydroxide. We write this L for liquid to indicate that it's concentrated. So you add concentrated sodium hydroxide to a halo alkane and you heat the two of them and then that will form an alkene plus two other products. What will those other products be? To help you, look at these pictures. So let's imagine we have this haloalkane, chloroethane, and we heat it with concentrated sodium hydroxide. We end with this alkene, ethene. But what other two products must we end with so that this is a balanced reaction? So notice we need to get rid of the halogen atom, but that's not all. We also need to get rid of this hydrogen atom. So this sodium Sodium hydroxide somehow has to accept these two things that we've got to get rid of to form two products. What are they? Let's watch this. The sodium and the chlorine bond and then that hydrogen we want to get rid of bonds with the hydroxyl to form water. So we end with an alkene and sodium chloride. In this case it's chloride but sometimes it might be some other halogen so let's rather write in the general form NaX and water. So there we have it. We react concentrated sodium hydroxide with a haloalkane. We heat them. We get three products. The alkene, which is what we wanted, sodium halide, and water. Let's take an example. What if we have two bromobutane? We add sodium hydroxide. We heat them. What will the products be? Pause until you've answered this yourself. The products will be this alkene plus sodium bromide plus water. The name of this alkene is butene. Now notice that when we get rid of this bromine, as well as one of the hydrogens, it could happen that we get rid of them like this and form the double bond here. Or it could happen, as it mainly does, that we get rid of this hydrogen and form the double bond there. The major product is formed such that the double bond is more inside, less on the edge. So a haloalkane reacts with concentrated sodium hydroxide to form an alkene, sodium halide, and water. What kind of reaction is this? Let's take a look again to help us to decide what kind of reaction? Is it addition, substitution, or elimination? The chlorine is extracted out, reacts with the sodium. The hydrogen is extracted out, reacts with the hydroxyl to form sodium chloride and water, and the double bond forms. Can you see that nothing has been added to this organic compound? Only things have been taken out of it. And so from that we can see it's an elimination reaction. And what is it that has been taken out? It's this hydrogen as well as the halogen. The hydrogen goes in there, bonding with the OH to form H2O, and the halogen goes in there. So that's dehydrohalogenation, because we've taken out a hydrogen, dehydro, and we've taken out a halogen, dehalogen. Put that together, dehydrohalogenation. And it's an elimination reaction because things have just been taken out of the haloalkane to form the alkene. So in summary, an alkene reacts spontaneously with HX or X2 to form a haloalkane. And that's called hydrohalogenation or halogenation. That happens very easily as the double bond of the alkene is replaced with HX or X2. The reverse reaction, though, does not happen easily. We have to heat it. We also have to use concentrated sodium hydroxide to pull out the X, which goes then with the sodium to form sodium X, for example, sodium chloride or sodium bromide or sodium iodide, and to pull out the extra hydrogen to form water. So the concentrated sodium hydroxide reacts with the haloalkane to form an alkene sodium halide plus water, and that is called dehydrohalogenation. Hydrohalogenation or halogenation, which convert an alkene to a haloalkane, are addition reactions. Whereas dehydrohalogenation is an elimination reaction.